From the Ticats Audio Network, this is Morialli and Hitch. Well, welcome everybody to the Morielli and Hitch podcast on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Uh, I'm Rob Hitchcock. We are going to have the greatest show ever tonight because our anchor, our co-host, our whatever you want to call him, Morielli, is actually not in town. He bailed on us, guys. He bailed on us about half an hour ago or maybe an hour ago. He said he's traveling in Whistler. And he doesn't have very good cell connection up there. Come on, seriously. Must Anyways, be nice. it was. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have a great show. We've got some great guests on, and they're actually on with me right now. Uh, great friends, uh, great teammates, um, and some real special news that we're gonna share again with uh, with you all. And uh, I hope everyone's doing well. And, and Butko just showed his face there, Oz. And you know, we we can make fun of him. We'll probably do that at the end of the show, just because we don't want to waste too much time. <laughs> but uh, you know he's he's one that we'd love to uh, the guys that I the guys that um, uh, guys that listen to this on, on this show for a lot of my buddies just love having him on because we just get to crush him like we did in the locker room um, with all the guys that we used to beat up and crush in, in the room. But he's uh, he's a guy that we'll just take advantage of later on in the show. But uh, right now I want to welcome Paul Baldison, in other words, Ozzy, Darren Flutie, Wood. Welcome to the show, guys. We've got, uh, I know this is your second, I think your third time, Moz, maybe? I don't even know. I think we had you on. This might be your third. I don't I know. I think so. Yeah, I think. I don't keep track. And uh, Wood, Darren Flutie, you were on with us, uh, in, of course, a couple of months ago when we uh, only mentioned about you going up on the wall. And this is part of the show. Um, we usually start out, Mike usually starts talking and he doesn't stop, but we usually start, <laughs> start talking about the... Uh, you know, the, the, the season. And before we get into all these great things that we're going to talk about, guys, have you been following? I know, Oz, you've been following the Thai Cats, And, you know, when I, when I look at the, the Eastern Division right now and, and Toronto being 7-1, and one, Montreal 5-3, and three, and then, of course, as bad as Hamilton has played, losing two quarterbacks that are 3-5, and five, they're in third place and they're in the playoff spot. So we can't, we can't say too, too much. But then you look at the West and BC and, and, uh, and, and, BC and Winnipeg, both at 7-2. and two. Um, what do you guys what are you guys thinking of the of the season so far in the in the east especially anyone uh, you- well, I, I yeah I, you know I I feel bad for Morielli first of all because I know how hard it is to get service at Whistler that's why the all the Olympic coverage that they had up there was you know no one saw the Olympic games I guess <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Yeah, you know, guys, we all played in this league long enough. It, it's all who's hot and healthy at the end. Um, doesn't matter if you finish in third, second, or first. You know, I won two Grey Cups in second place, lost two in first. And, you know, the Cats right now obviously need to, you know, break a trend that's been going on for a while, and that's turnovers and, and bad penalties at bad times. And I think if they can clear that up, you know, they've certainly got the personnel. They've certainly got the coaching staff. Um, You know, they can still make something very, very good of this season. And, uh, you know, all they've got to do is finish ahead of that fourth place team in the West. And, and, uh, you know, they've got a chance to um, finish ahead of Ottawa and even Montreal. Um, So I just think that they need to, like I said, eliminate those costly penalties at the wrong time and some turnovers and and they're going to be just fine yeah well, Darren, how about you buddy you guys are a lot a lot closer to it than i am but i did talk with danny today so and we were talking about getting in town tomorrow yeah. so he gave me a rundown of the whole cfl so i had d max view of it yeah which was basically yeah uh, bc and winnipeg out west he said Edmonton, as bad as they are at 0-9, and, and that's the game we'll be up for, I guess, or I'll be up for. Yeah. Uh, he says they aren't an 0-9 team. They're better than that, but that's Max's yeah. take on it. And, uh, you know, from what I heard about Hamilton, again, they have a great defense. I think they're, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, their offense just has to find its stride, and they still got half the season to go. So yeah. a lot of time to do that. Well, we were, uh, well, welcome again, guys. My, my, Meetsy and I were talking about two weeks ago, guys. Where's my dog? Can you hear him? No, I'm never. Can't hear him? Can't hear him. <laughs> oh, what? I didn't hear anything. Uh, oh, sorry about that. You know what? That's okay. Um, we were talking about two weeks ago with regards to, uh, 
Oh my God, he got me all flustered here, this damn dog, and I kick him in the face. Has there ever been, <laughs> has there ever been a crossover in, in our time? I don't, we don't remember of it, of the East going to like a Western team. So the fourth place team in the East, could that happen? I don't even know if it's in the rule book because the West has five, five teams and the East has four. So if, if the fourth place team in the East has a better record than the third in the West, do they go over? I believe so. Yeah, I, I, that's a question I don't I, think I has I ever came up because it's so never happened. happened. Oh, I think it's it happened. Has it ever happened? I don't think it so. hasn't. No, I, I felt like it no. happened. Well, at least the scenario was talked about. I can't remember a specific time, but I yeah. mean, if they have a better record, right, they'd cross over. That's the yeah, whole well, thing. Yeah. What's What's the difference between you can't create a rule like that and have it one sided because one division has five teams? Yeah. You know, it was all about it was all about that last playoff spot where you know they didn't want a team that was you know five and 13 to make the playoffs yeah um and and it worked uh i believe it works both ways well, i could be wrong i mean who knows they change the rules well, all the time and used to pay attention to them i don't so much anymore we should we should look at that we'll get bucko to look in on it but uh i mean edmonton 0 and 9 and and calgary 3 and 6 i mean they're the same as ottawa on the fourth right now so anyways there's lots of football to go but um, the reason for this show, and uh, again, we're, we're just, uh, I'm super, super excited. I know Oz is super excited. Uh, Darren, as you know, of course, they're coming up here in a couple of days. Uh, Wednesday, I think, is the, uh, the meet and greet over at the Moxie's in, at Centennial Parkway. And uh, there's going to be a bunch of us up there to celebrate uh, your induction to the Wall of Honor. Um, you know, we, we, we talked to you a couple months ago and we're, you know, we're just ecstatic that you, you're picked and it was I was thinking to myself the other day um, I think it's getting more and more special and it's dear to my heart and I know it's dear to the guys hearts that are on it Ozzy and Montford and and D-Mac because I look at that wall now and there's like five of us that from the 99 team that are on that wall so those guys are two things there's some decent players that's why we're going up but we're also getting old guys so like what is yeah what like what is that what is it? I know we asked you before Darren but what does it mean I mean this is old to you what are you on two walls right now aren't you on BC and Edmonton's wall like this is old school for you right now isn't it <laughs> well first of all it would never get old because it's I'm always kidding. a rem- no it's a reminder of the days I spent in Hamilton and our team our teammates which I thought was just the best locker room I've ever played in but I mean yeah I was fortunate enough to go up in British Columbia that was, I forget, that might have been pre-COVID or right yeah. after COVID and now Hamilton. But no, I didn't go up in Edmonton. I was two two years there, so no. But Hamilton just seems special. It was kind of when I was at the peak of my career and then coming out here with Danny and with Coach Lancaster to what we knew was a good team. Like, I really thought immediately we'd be good. And I remember Coach Lancaster always telling me, listen, don't say that to the press. You know, you don't know what... The first year is going to be like. I'm like, yeah. well, why wouldn't we be good? They were good the year before. Their defense was outstanding. As long as we move the football a little bit, we'll be good. And I love going back to those years and thinking about it. I mean, 98 is what, 25 <laughs> years ago? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I can remember everything like it was yesterday. I can really just play it all over in my head. So yeah. obviously it's special. It means a lot to me. Hey, Oz, how about you, bud? Yeah, you know, you, you you used to see names go up on the wall of honor that you watched as a kid. Um, and then, you know, gentlemen that you knew um, because you were playing. And then all of a sudden it's your teammates going up there. Um, you're right. We're getting old. <laughs> that's, that's a really good indication of, you know, how old you are is how many teammates you have up on these uh, enshrinements here. Um, but I'm like Darren, you know, and, and you as well, Hitch. The, you know, the honor of that is indescribable, you know, and I think if you go to most players and say, would you rather be up on your wall of honor or the Hall of Fame? Um, most of them would pick, you know, the Wall of Honor. There's far few players on the Hamilton Tiger Cat, you know, Wall of Honor than there are in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. You know, it, it's the who's who have played, you know, who played for that organization for such a long period of time. And Darren's right, you know, um, sitting the year before, 
when we did lose a lot of games, but they were close. Never did I expect that the addition of just three gentlemen would turn us around as as quickly as we did. And Darren's right, that locker room became very, very special um, because the personalities were allowed to come through to control it, to run it, to make it what we wanted to be, to know that we would be successful on the football field. Added with a whole lot of insanity, it uh, it worked. And uh, I've never had so much fun on the field, and I know definitely none of us have ever had as much fun off the field as those few years when when those three wonderful gentlemen showed up. Yeah, well said, buddy. You know, one thing I remember, and I, we might have alluded to this, you know, in our past conversations, but it's nice to bring it up again. Darren, when we talked about this, Ozzy and I were, I mean, I came in in 95. When you guys came in in 98, like you said, we, we were a, we were a good team. Our record didn't reflect our, how, like how bad our record was. We were a lot better than that. And when you guys came in, and I'll never forget this, when I think it was, uh, I think it was Ozzy, I think D, D Mac, Flutie, there was a couple other guys. I was actually involved in that kind of just sitting back because I'm listening to the, the old vet guys go through this. But Ronnie Lancaster took a bunch of us aside. And I'll never forget it. He's like, you guys, and pointed mainly at you, Ozzy, and, and Danny, and, and the guys that were been in the league for a while. So you're going to police the locker room, and that's it. And I didn't, we didn't, I didn't know anything about policing a locker room because, you know, Don Southern, God rest him, f- unbelievable coach, different coaching philosophy than Ronnie had, but still expected the best out of you. And I think that what I liked about it is that he just let us control that locker room and I can tell you, and, and in that same sentence, I can say, and I think you guys will agree, there could be 15, 20 more guys on the wall just from that team that we played with. Like there is that team that we had in 98, 99, 2000, and even 2001, um, I thought were some of the, you know, the best teams that we've ever had. And Ozzy, you've been there a long time on a lot of teams before me. And, and I, I can say that because of, I've never played on those other teams, but if you can comment on that, that would be uh, both you guys who would comment on it. Because, Darren, you've been in the league you know, a, lot, a lot longer than I have before I came in. So, Well, I mean, I can only speak as someone coming into that locker room. I didn't know before what the locker room was like. But I know that uh, we had enough experience and enough guys that had been around that if Ronnie just – I call him Ronnie, Coach Lancaster – just let us be ourselves – and take over and work hard and become the best football players we could, which that's what the atmosphere was. It was work your ass off, be the best you can be. But yeah, yeah I mean, you're playing pro football, have some fun while you're doing it. And with that atmosphere, you know, winning, if you have the players, and we certainly had the players, winning will take care of itself. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. There are so many unbelievable football players over that short period of time you know unfortunately for a lot of the guys that didn't play long enough i think uh you know for the organization to get their names up on the up on the wall but as far as talent goes you know absolutely they were you know and and darren darren's got it bang on you know like like he said ronnie Ronnie's the guy that came in, uh, you know, and there was nothing wrong with our locker room before, um, you know, uh, the gentleman showed up. Um, you know, our team was lacking, I think, offensively, um, you know, a little bit of leadership. And I think, you know, at that period, I think I was, uh, you know, 12, 13 years into my career. And it's one of those life lessons where, you, you know, you think you know what you're doing and then all of a sudden you realize there's still lots to learn. You know, you're never too old to learn. Football is the type of uh, occupation in the game that you never stop learning at. You're always learning even until the time you retire and you go, oh, geez, you know, hey, I'm still learning. And, and I think Darren and Danny and uh, Coach Lancaster taught me a lot in a very short period of time. To me, it felt like it was just the missing link um, and, and in ways that you, you can't describe it. But to me, it was just the missing link of taking my game and our game and the team's game to the next level. 
And and I don't even really know if Danny and Darren and Ron knew how to do it. It's just the way they did things. If you could can it, you'd be a billionaire and you'd be able to turn any sports franchise in the world into the next World Series champs or NBA champs or NHL champs. Um, but it's, it's, it's one of those things where you can't put your finger on anything. You can't describe it. You can't create a recipe for it. It, it just happens or it doesn't. And for us, it definitely happened. And I, I would have never guessed that our success would have been so fast and, and so hard. But it was. Yeah, well said. Well, it, uh, it's been 25 years. What do you, you put it in perspective, buddy? That's a long time ago. Yeah, but uh, let's uh, let's get into the the meat and potatoes of this and and why we're on this show because uh, you know we can talk to we're blue in the face about what we did in the locker room because we've got a million stories that we could go through. But this week's a real special one. Um, Darren Flutie going up on the Wall of Honor. I think you're the twenty sixth twenty sixth guy. I think it was the twenty fourth a couple of years ago. So I think Danny went up uh, last year before you. So I think you're the twenty sixth or twenty seventh. I'm not quite sure, Darren, but. Um, we're we're so excited. Um, you know, I don't know if you know, but Ozzy is going to be your master of ceremonies, your uh, whatever you want to call him. He's going to be that guy, and I know that I he's, do know he's, that he is he is ready for it. And uh, oh. I, 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 just, fig- I figured I, nobody else wanted to do it, or everybody was busy. <laughs> yeah, they asked Morielli first, but he doesn't get cell cell service. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's right. Yeah, but he is uh, he is going to be that guy for you, Darren. We are all going to be there. I know Wednesday night it does start. Uh, Mike, if you can believe it, he did he did text me and say that. Can you please make sure you tell the boys that I am coming home early? I'm like, oh. Good for you. You're coming home early for Darren. Are you doing him a favor? <laughs> hey, hey, us. <laughs> oh, so he he is coming back early. But Wednesday night at Moxie's, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a good turnout of guys that we played with. Uh, who knows who's gonna be showing up? I don't know the list, but uh, I know that we're gonna have a, a good time at, at that night to to recognize you, buddy. Well deserved. And um, you know what's Oz? Have you have you got anything under your sleeve that you can like? You can say anything to these guys, to, to us about right now, or is it all uh, is it all under hat? Well, you know what? Um, I, I think when you reach these pinnacle moments, it's it's uh, short, sweet, and classy. And uh, you know, we'll joke uh, we'll joke together about uh, you know Darren's uh, idiosyncrasies and <laughs> and uh, you know how funny he is on and off the field. And uh, but. I, I, you know, the 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 honor is is definitely, um, you know, a classy event. So, um, of course, you know, I, I I think we'll get a lot of stories out on Wednesday night. Um, you know, you're right. We do have a million stories we could tell <laughs> about that team. We probably have two million that we can't tell about that team. And thank God there wasn't uh, cell phones everywhere when we played. Um, <laughs> You know, but, uh, you know, no, I, I, it's Darren's night, um, well-deserved, well-earned, and uh, I want to focus on that, you know. Um, it, it, people know what a great football player he was, but uh, I don't think people understand how great of a mentor he was, uh, how great of a friend he was. Yeah, well, so, hey, Darren, you Thanks, know he's us. getting old, eh, bud, because he okay. – uh, 20 years ago, you would have been dead. <laughs> you would have been dead. Well, it's funny, you know, you, I think most people just think, you know, I practiced at receiver all day, every day. But Ozzy and I probably spent more time together than Danny and I spent. Because we yeah. go, we have to, you know, go off and spend good quality time with the snapper and get the holds down, get the kicks down. I've always, you know, I held in British Columbia with Saglier also. And you, you can't help but to get to know each other well and become friends. And over the years, Ozzy and I became good friends, great friends, just spending all that time together. How so, many balls do you th- How many of Ozzy's balls did you hold over your career? <laughs> oh, God. <yeah. laughs> Footballs? Well, I don't know. Yeah, footballs. All but two. All but two. <laughs> just two right here, right here on your shirt. 2001, two. Yeah, yeah. Four, five you years know, together. Darren, they were roommates for a while, too, you know. That's I, right. I, I lived That's with Darren, right. and Darren lived with me, and, uh, you know, we used to play the guitar. We'd have a couple of glasses of wine at night, watch some movies, 
you know, um, we both at that time of our life just, uh, you know, wanted to wanted to be home and have a simple life. And, you know, uh, Darren, more than anything, missed his wife and his family. And I think, uh, you know, Terry was very happy that he had someone that would, uh, you know, help take care of him when uh, she wasn't around and the kids weren't around because I know how hard it was on Darren, you know, every September or after Labor Day when his family went back to Boston, all of a sudden he's he's all alone again, um, you know, and he missed them terribly. He's a great family, man. Yeah, I agree. And he didn't want to live with Morielli or Grigor, I, so I, yeah. I don't know why <laughs> No, <laughs> that, that time. That was a tough time, though. That's right. You were great. And I appreciated that. We are with Paul Baldiston and Darren Flutie. Um, we are just talking about some good old stories that we had. And um, one of them was, uh, as a member, our lovely friend that's in the top right corner of us has never brought his <laughs> wallet ever to um, a road game. I don't even think he brought it to games that we were at home because I, I, I think you said earlier – well, I think we used to get about, I think it was about 80 bucks in per diem money for two, for or 120 bucks we used to get for two days. And Ozzy just said he comes back with 250 bucks. I don't know how he did it, but um, are <laughs> you going to bring your that. wallet this, this week, Wednesday or Thursday? Or Ozzy, well, is, are we going to get, we okay to, to get him on this? I was actually hoping you guys would cover me. Well, we'll get what we always used to get, which is I'll catch you guys at the club. <laughs> the problem <laughs> We're already at the club. <laughs> he, he meant the next club. Yeah, I think he meant the next club in 2036. Oh my! <laughs> Wood Flutie, I don't know how you managed to eat great meals. Um, you know, had a, maybe a couple of drinks uh, after the game, or even before the game, uh, the night before the <laughs> game. We maybe had a glass of wine or something before, but I don't know how you managed to come home with so much money. It boggles my mind because I just we used to come back broke, Ozzy. I remember you and you, me and Gregor used to go out a couple of times and we'd have no per diem money left the night before a game. <laughs> well, you know, I wouldn't well, eat I before a game. What I do remember about Darren very distinctly was that uh, whenever we went on a road trip, he never came out for any meal or any entertainment the night before the game. He was always right into his bed and asleep. Yeah. Until the next day, you know, at noon or two o'clock, he'd finally crack the eyes open and get out of bed. He, yeah, that's he, true. He was there, amazing. As yeah, soon as, he, I, I, as, soon as I, he sat down in the plane, yep, he was out and he never woke up till the next day. I was so jealous. I wish I could have done it. Oh, hey, Dan, man. you got to tell us what, tell us your little, like, um, I mean, we used to go out and have a nice dinner. Like, that was our thing, right? We love a nice dinner, maybe one glass of wine night before a game when practice ended like we came we had a little walk through I, I remember yeah you would get to the hotel and be pop up good night and you'd be gone oh, yeah. like how well we did we had young kids then too so every road trip was like my chance to kind of catch up on some sleep but I did like that I didn't like eating a lot like either the night before or the day of a game which was tough with night games but that's just the way I was I didn't like to eat a lot before that so I wouldn't do the dinner and I'd try to knock out as quickly as possible. Like we'd have a practice and if we were on the road, I'd try to get a lift in somewhere and then I'd try to go back to the room and just sleep. Well, hence hence the $250 of per diem. That's why, because you didn't eat or drink anything. So I guess I guess we were I guess we're well, wrong, but, us. We we knew we knew we knew his method of madness now. <laughs> oh my god. Well, there were a ton of nights where it was he like was, uh he was a what, <laughs> <laughs> I only have a uh, U.S. money, and I don't have any change. It's, it's always something, just a coincidence. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> after, well, after he had been in Canada for six months, he only had U.S. dollars. <laughs> yeah, twelve <laughs> he must years. Have paid you in U.S. Six months, bucks. God. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, Darren, again, man, you are uh, you are being inducted to the Wall of Honor. This Thursday, uh, game against the Edmonton. Oh, I was going to say Edmonton Elks. Um, there's another thing. Did you hear about the the Washington Redskins? Did you hear? About yeah, I that? did hear that. I saw that today. It's all so, coming back around, isn't it? They all wanted to come back around. So someone said to me today, they said you should. Uh, they, someone should talk to Edmonton and, and get the Eskimos back instead of the Elks. Um, maybe they'll win a game. I'm like, oh, that's pretty harsh. 
Um, but you are going up, Darren. You're going up on the wall with 26 uh, of us and five of your former 99 Grey Cup teammates. And, uh, you know, again, I, I can't say how much or how proud I am of you and, and you know, call you as a, as a, as a friend and an awesome teammate. And I know Ozzy, um, you know, of course, feels and thinks the world of, of you as well, along with, you know, the many guys that you played with over your career and well-deserved. And um, I know you've, I know you said it earlier in the show, but you know, when you, when you came into Hamilton, um, you know, a sense of you were later on in your career, um, you know, to play that many seasons in the CFL and to have such success and, and being so successful in Hamilton as well. Um, what did it mean to you when you came into Hamilton and now you've got this honor, you're going up, um, and it's just for me when I first heard it, and I know Oz was in the same boat. It's kind of you don't know what to to think or say. It doesn't really sink in until the day. Like when 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 Bob Young told me five months before I was going in, I was like, "Yeah, that's great." And it sunk in like this week. And you know, when you're traveling yeah. here, like just tell us a little bit about that adventure and you know in Hamilton and and how you uh, you know how you came about to to being such a you know a dominant player in this league for so many years. Oh, well, thank you. I'm not sure I was that dominant, but I appreciate it. I, you know, I think the experiences we have before we get there, right? We all think of the time we spent together. So it starts in 98 in training camp and we move on from there. But I really think of my time with Danny, both in British Columbia, where that 94 season was so amazing. And even 95, I was hurt for a lot of it, but that was a great year, especially for Danny. And then 96, 97, we spend in Edmonton, which I thought Danny was amazing in Edmonton. For what we had as a group, he really played great. And then 97, they want to get rid of him. And that's what really upset me. Like, they were asking me to come back. Archer was coming in. I think Kay Stevenson was the coach. They were asking me to come back, but they were going to get rid of D Mac and bring in David Archer. And I'm like, that's not apples to apples. You know, David Archer... He's fine, but he's no Danny Mac. So I knew, you know, that was kind of unfair to Danny. So when Danny said, hey, what do you think about going to Hamilton? I was like, I am in. I'm 100% in because that's a very good football team that all they need is like a good leader like D Mac, who's just a steady, great quarterback. And the rest of us are just fill in the places on offense and we'll win games with our defense until we get it going. And we got it going pretty quickly, I think, on offense. So it, it really came together quickly. I expected that. I, I guess maybe Coach Lancaster and Danny didn't expect it as much. But it's the CFL, right? Every year is so valuable. We were talking about that, like, especially as a receiver, defensive back. I mean, you got 11, 12 years to play if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. And every one of those years means so much. So to let a year go by when you have the team that can, can get it done, I mean, I'm still upset we didn't win the Grey Cup in 98, and I played so crappy in that 98 Grey Cup. No, but we got 99. <laughs> <laughs> we got it in 99. That's that's yeah, good enough. That is good enough. But we could have went on a good run there, eh? We could have. Yeah. Hey, what's that? We could have. We could have. We should have. Should have. <laughs> should have, could have, would have. I don't want to hear it. Uh, Earl Whitfield. <laughs> oh, I loved it. Uh, well, is it, or sorry, uh, Darren, is it, is it sinking in yet? You know, oh, because it is um, a big yeah. deal. Ozzy mentioned, and then he made a great point earlier in the show about, you know, there's so many guys in the hall of fame, but to actually go up into the stadium and be one of, you know, 26 guys that have a history of in Hamilton of 132 years history, like it, you know, being a Hamilton kid, it, it, it really took to me that week when I, when I was, you know, especially on my way to the stadium and I know Ozzy um, can feel it. He'll, he'll talk about it after you do, but you know, what, what does that mean? Um, you know, is it starting to kick in right now or is it just, uh, just another, you know, I'm just going to get oh, in there and do my thing. No, it, it kicked in instantly when Bob Young called me and told me that I would go up on the uh, wall of honor this season. You know, I knew from being at last year's event, And just from being around the CFL, that the quality of people that are up on that wall, the quality of people I got the opportunity to play with in my short time in Hamilton and the players that that are up there, you know, I kind of spent my whole career trying to not get noticed, go under the radar a little bit and make plays where and when I can. 
but you know, not bang my chest too much because I don't want anyone to notice me and maybe they won't notice I have some catches or whatever. But then you finish 12 years of playing and you look back and you're like, wow, you know, that's something I'm very proud of. Yeah. You know, what I was able to accomplish in those years. And I just think it's, first of all, it's very special to be in that group of people. I think Ozzy said it earlier. It's it's like more prestigious than going into the CFL Hall of Fame because it's such a finite number of men that have done that. You got to play five years or more and you got to play at a very high level to get up on this wall. And you just yeah. look at the names and you know, it's a special group. So yeah, I, I got that pretty much right away. That's awesome. How about you, us? When you, when you heard the news, what uh, same sort of thing? I, yeah. You're, you're, you know, you're overwhelmed. Um, you're right. Hitch. It doesn't, it doesn't hit you right away. You know, you have that. Uh, I was also very fortunate that Bob Young was the gentleman that called me and let me know. Um, but I remember earlier in my career and, you know, kind of mid career watching guys like Ben Zambi, as you go up, Les Brown, uh, Rocky DiPietro, Grover Covington, guys that I played with when I was a young football player. So to me, it was always something that you don't even think about when you're in your first, fourth, fifth, sixth year you know, those guys are untouchable. They're, they're, they're the guys that people talk about around town. And uh, you get the phone call and it, it, it hits you pretty hard. Like, you know, wow, you know, and you've got some news and then a, a great deal. It seems like a great deal of time passes. And then all of a sudden the week's here. And then, you know, when you see the circumstance of it, um, you know, you see your name go up next to everybody else's up there and you're in that group now, it's a little overwhelming and it, and it is extremely special. You know, it really hits you right in the heart that, uh, wow, you, you know, like Darren said, this is, this is something that you are extremely proud of. And, um, you know, it's funny looking up at the wall there for the most part, you, you know, one of the biggest things I was impressed with with uh, Danny and Darren when they came is that it was leadership through example. It wasn't leadership through talk. You know, it was on the field. It was this is how you practice. This is how you play. This is how you act on and off the field. Um, it was leadership by example, not by verbal, you know, instructions or you should do this. You should be this. It's here's what I am. Here's what I do. And if you're smart enough, which most of us were, um, you recognize it and you understand that, wow, you know, like I said, they taught me a lot when they came, those, those three fellas. And um, that was the biggest thing. You know, I was never, I was like Darren, I, 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 you know, I never wanted to be recognized. I, you know, didn't do a dance or anything after I kicked a field goal, even a game winning one. I'd rather celebrate with my teammates and get in the locker room and have a few beers with them and celebrate some more. You know, it was, it was about us and it was about winning. It was about doing your role to put other guys in the position for them to be successful, you know, and I think our whole team was built on a bunch of football players that would rather go unnoticed and win than catch six touchdown passes or make three interceptions and lose, you know, and have their name in the paper the next day. That, that was a leadership that Darren brought. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just proud and, and honored to say that, I'm on the wall with you two. And it's, you know, I look at you two as role models to me when I first came in. Um, and for me to be up there and, and to have you two guys on on this show right now is is just, you know, not only as you're my 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 close friends, it's just a, you know, it's a dream come true for a Hamilton kid, especially. And, you know, I'm I'm truly blessed and honored, you guys. And hey, hey Darren, I remember in 1999 when we were, had such a good special teams group. Do you remember this on the wide angle end zone copy of when we used to watch the rundown tapes when Ozzy would kick his kickoff? He would kick it off, and all of a sudden we he he knew we were going down there to make a tackle. He'd pick his tee up and just walk off the field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, remember seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to stop telling that story because it was one game. It was one game when I was hurt and I was instructed. That's what I was going to say. Specifically by the head coach, 
not to run down the field. I made my fair share. That was a joke. You know it was a joke. (laughs) made 10 special teams tackles in a year. I made a lot. They never counted track of them when I started, or or I would have been right up there (laughs) close to you. The ring is the the thing. (laughs) That's right. Well, guys, listen, um, we're not going to take too much more of your time. I want to thank you you two, especially for, for making the time to come on the show today. Morielli couldn't make the time for you two, and we're going to have to get him on Wednesday. But I really want to thank you guys for, for making the time. Come on out to uh, to this show, and, um, you know, you're listening to the Morielli and Hitch podcast. Actually, we're going to call it the Hitch podcast today with two <laughs> special guests, Paulus Balls and Darren Flutie. I love you guys. I'm so looking forward to see you on Wednesday. And uh, this is the Hamilton's Audio Network, the Ticats Audio Network. Guys, enjoy yourselves. We'll see you on Wednesday. And uh, love you, man. Thanks, Hitch. Thanks, Thanks, Oz. Hold on a sec. I'm sorry Mike missed it. Mike's on a skiing trip in August. That's another episode of Mori Alley and Hitch on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Have a question or a comment for them? Email us at mnh at ticats.ca. That's M-A-N-D-H at ticats.ca.